Okay, so you have your subscription and you've unpacked it and you're looking at all the beads and you're wondering, okay, where do I start? What do I do? The color scheme is great. It's all coordinated, which is nice. It makes it easy to find inspiration, but you have to have a starting point. And the way I do it is I, tr I, I first I choose a focal bead and that would be the focal bead of the necklace and Vigan Bead Box is very good about giving you some focal beads. So as you can see, we have this one right here. We also have this one. We have a couple of other beads that, you know, could either be used as a focal or a connector bead. Um, here's another one. And so I start with a focal bead and if I'm doing a necklace, um, I usually start with that and then I decide, okay, do I wanna do a necklace and earrings? Do I wanna do a necklace, earrings and bracelet? What do I wanna do? But this is a good place to start. So I chose this as the main focal bead. I'm gonna do a multi-strand, so there'll be beads coming off these, these two elements here, components. This is the other strand, and then the, there'll be connected beads in between. Uh, and then a third one here, a third. So it's gonna be a three-strand necklace. And these are all the beads that I'm gonna be using. More, more than likely, I'll link three together. Uh, combination of three there's gold um, you know we also have silver which I'm not sure how I'm going to incorporate that but um, but it's possible because we have this light blue which would go well with the silver components or the silver beads um, so anyway that's how I normally start I start with the focal then I kind of build it I try to you know decide okay how is it going to look is it going to be one strand is it going to be multi-strand um, over here, a couple of beads that I'm going to probably use as earrings. Um, they're not exactly like the other beads, but, you know, they have the same kind of colors in them. So um, that's what I want to do with these two, you know, as, uh, use them as earrings. I'm not too happy about these large clasps, but I think they'll work just fine with the color scheme, you know, the yellow gold. Um, so anyway, I, that's that's what I normally do. I usually start with the focal beads. I put them down on, on the board. I lay them out. Um, you know, this, I may have more than just one coming up here on, on both sides. Uh, and then combination beads, you know, in between. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's how I start. And then, um, you know, then I continue to lay down the beads. And I, I don't always use a beading, a necklace board. I don't, know, I don't know what you call them, but it's the beetle on uh, board that allows you to measure out how long the necklace is going to be. Uh, as you can see, I'm just using a regular beading board with no measurements at all. I just want to kind of get an idea, get inspiration of how I'm going to lay out the beads. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I went ahead and laid out the beads the way I think might work well with a multi-strand necklace and I have to apologize because in my previous video segment I had mentioned that I was going to use these silver beads but these silver beads are not actually part of the bargain bead box subscription for March so my apologies I was actually going to use them here in this top strand which would have worked out fine but um they were not part of the subscription, so I don't know how they got in the mix. I apologize for that. But um, but anyway, so there are no silver beads in this design or in the subscription. These are the beads that came with the subscription, and I kind of laid them out as best as I can um, just to get an idea of how I'm going to string them. Um, so as you can see, there's the focal bead for the first strand, and then the two other focal beads and if I zoom out you'll see it's a three strand necklace um, I'll probably attach chain at the top right here and the chain will probably connect to the clasp but I will have to see how it works out as far as the lengths um, this is a very you know preliminary design of what I'm going to do. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how I laid them out. This is the way I do it initially. 
it's not necessarily going to be the finished product but it gives you some idea of how I design the necklaces and what I did you know how I decide what beads to use so that it's balanced and by the way I got to tell you that these components this focal bead is such great quality it's going to be absolutely beautiful in the finished product so anyway I just wanted to show you part of my process it's going to be kind of backwards and you know I'm going to probably show this I don't know I may show this at the beginning or at the end of the of the tutorial but I just wanted to show you the process of how I uh, design the the layout of what it is that I'm going to do and like I said it may not it may or may not be the finished product one thing that I wanted to mention um, we're going to be attaching the chain um, to these three strands so there'll be the three strands attached to the jump ring and then comes the chain um, I just wanted to point out that these jump rings are not included in the bag and bead box for March so these are you're, you're gonna have to find them you know on your own the, these two are about 10 millimeters in diameter and uh, they're gonna be used to attach the three strands so the three strands will be attached to this large jump ring then comes the chain which is this one here it comes with a, a subscription for March then at the end of the chain we'll attach a five millimeter jump ring okay same thing on the other side and then the clasp will be attached to that and then at the end of this one we'll, we'll attach this jump ring which is about eight millimeters in diameter you can choose a larger one if you if you want to but you're going to need something for the class to attach to so i just wanted to point point it out that these jump rings you'll have to get separately so some additional items that you're going to need are going to be these y protector uh, components i i use these to attach the wire to the chain uh, i'm sorry the beading string I thread it through and then I attach that to the chain and that just gives it a little bit more strength because um, uh, you've got a flexible string um, touching a hard metal jump ring and so this gives, gives it a little bit more protection and uh, you're going to need about, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight approximately then you're also going to need, need another uh, jump ring to attach this focal bead in the middle there and this one's about five millimeters and then the other thing you'll need the final thing you'll need is some crimp beads because we're going to be using a combination of chain and flexible uh, beading uh, stringing wire Let's go over the, uh, the the beads that you're going to be needing, and we're going to go over the the beads for the larger strand first. The first thing you're going to need is the, the number twelve from the uh, bargain bead box for March, which is this one right here. It's the fifty-four by thirty-two millimeter embossed pendant. Okay. Then you're going to need uh, number eight, which is the um, 14 millimeter embossed diamond shaped metal beads which are these right here okay so you're going to need six of those all right then you're going to need number 10 which is the dark blue um seven um i'm sorry eight millimeter electroplated agate beads in the deep blue iris these right here so you're going to need eight of these, okay, these dark blue ones. Then you're going to need number three, which is the six by four millimeter Chinese crystal rondelle beads in the sky blue shimmer. So it's, it's these beads right here, these little ones. And you're going to need 16 of those, okay, and then finally, you're going to need uh, number six, number six, which is the um, four millimeter round metal spacer beads. Those are these 
little gold ones right here, these gold ones, and you're going to need 18 of these. I forgot to mention one more item for the large strand. You'll be needing the number 15 beads, which are the um, um, 8x6 Chinese crystal rondelles in the teal shimmer color, and you will be needing two of these. Okay, now for the uh, the middle strand, this one right here. Let's go over the beads that you're gonna need for that. You're gonna need number 13, which is the 32 by 25 millimeter faceted quartz pendant with gold plated brass, this one right here. Okay, and then you're gonna need number 14, which is the little skull bead that you see right here. You're going to need four of these, okay? Then you're going to need um, eight of the number one beads, which is which are the um, four millimeter Chinese crystal bicones. These little ones right here, they're in the aqua color. So you're going to need eight of those. And then you're going to need number seven, which is actually this component right here. It's a 34 by 20 millimeter faceted glass link in the color steel blue. You're going to need two of these. And that's what comes with the um, subscription. Okay. And then you're going to need number eight. Number eight, which is the... 14 millimeter embossed diamond shaped metal uh, beads, this one right here. Okay, we use those in the larger strand and you're gonna need two of these, one on each side. Okay, and then you're gonna need 12 of the number two beads, which are the six by four millimeter opaque glass rondelle beads in the color denim blue. And the, the, these are the beads right here at the end. You're gonna need six on this side, six on that side, so a total of 12. And then finally, you're gonna use the number six beads, which are the gold spacer beads. They're four millimeter, four millimeter round beads, and you're gonna need eight of those. And they're gonna go right here at the end of the strand. All right, let's go over the um, beads for the shorter strand now. You're gonna need one of number 11, which is this vocal bead right here, and that's the 28 millimeter compass bead. Okay, and then you're gonna need 14 of number six, which is the little gold uh, four, four millimeter round spacer beads. Okay, and then you're gonna need um, 24 of the four millimeter bicone Chinese crystals in the aqua color. You'll need tw uh, 24 of these. And then you're gonna need number five, which is the four millimeter Chinese crystal round bead in the steel blue shimmer color. All right, so you need 18 of those. And then finally, of course, you're gonna need the clasp, which is number four in your bargain bead box for March subscription. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start uh, stringing the, the larger strand, the first strand, which is the larger one of the three. And I'm using the Beadalon 49 strand uh, beading flexible wire. And you're gonna cut yourself approximately, I don't know, 24 inches or so. You want to just make sure you have enough so that you're not struggling with that, you know, um, beading wire that's too short. And the first thing you're going to do is you are going to bead the crimping wire, uh, the crimp, the crimp bead. You're going to put that on first, just like that. And then you're going to put on the wire protector, which is a little bit tricky, but you thread it in one end just like that and then you take the uh, the end and you thread it in through the other end of the uh, wire protector just like 
of this. It's kind of tricky because it's a little bit small, but that's what it looks like. Okay. Then you're going to take the little tail and thread it through the crimping wire. And then you're going to pull, you're going to push that crimping wire all the way through until it's close to the wire protector. Just like that. Okay. Then you're going to get your crimping pliers and you're going to go ahead and squish down that crimp bead using that first notch of the um, pliers. Turn it and crimp it down this way so that it forms a tight cylinder. Mine keeps wanting to slip. Let me try this again. Crimp it down. And you don't want it too close to these um, wire protectors because you want to have a little bit of um, give. You don't want it to be too tight. So this is what you have, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and grab the other end and we're going to start putting on our beads. You want to make sure that the end is not all crimped up like this is. Nice and smooth so you can bead easily. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bead the four millimeter round spacer bead, then the diamond, um, diamond shaped embossed bead, then the four millimeter spacer bead. Then comes the six by four rondelle, I'm sorry, six by four rondelle in the uh, sky blue shimmer color. Then comes the larger eight millimeter deep blue iris bead. Then the sky blue shimmer bead again. Moving right along, we're going to go ahead and put in, put on the four millimeter spacer bead again. The sky blue shimmer rondelle, the deep blue iris bead, larger one, eight millimeter. Then comes the sky blue rondelle again, then your four millimeter spacer bead in the gold color, then your diamond shaped embossed bead, then the gold spacer bead again, then comes the sky, the sky blue shimmer bead rondelle, then the deep blue iris bead, the rondelle again, then the spacer bead, the gold spacer bead. And now we're going to go ahead and put on the teal shimmer eight by six millimeter rondelle. Then the spacer bead, the smaller rondelle in the um, sky blue shimmer color, the deep blue iris larger bead, the sky blue shimmer rondelle, the eight millimeter gold spacer bead. I'm sorry, not eight millimeter, four millimeter. Then the diamond shaped embossed bead, another spacer bead, and this is about halfway through, okay? Um, so now we're going to go ahead and put on this jump bead, 
or jump ring I should say, and then we'll thread on the focal bead after we finish stringing this larger strand. Now, one thing that I want to show you at this end, you want to try to thread that little tail through a couple of the beads to give it a little bit more strength. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a couple. And then you can snip off the excess. This is just to give it some strength, okay? So here's your jump ring. We're gonna continue threading the rest of the strand and um, it's the same thing that we did here just in reverse and um, I'm going to go ahead and do it off camera for for a few minutes and I'll be right back okay so I'm back so here it is in reverse we have the four millimeter gold spacer bead the diamond shaped uh, embossed bead another four, four millimeter the sky blue shimmer rondelle the deep iris larger bead another sky blue shimmer rondelle the uh, four millimeter spacer bead. Then we have the um, eight by six Chinese crystal rondelle in the teal shimmer color, another four millimeter, a sky blue shimmer, a blue iris, a sky blue shimmer, a gold spacer bead, another diamond shaped embossed bead, another gold spacer bead, the sky blue shimmer, the deep iris, sky blue shimmer rondelle, the four millimeter gold spacer bead, Sky Blue Shimmer, Deep Iris, Sky Blue Shimmer, 4mm uh, Spacer Bead, the Diamond Embossed Bead, and another 4mm Spacer Bead. Then I went ahead and threaded on a crimp bead, the wire protector, and I ran it through the other end and back through the crimp bead and back through these two beads to give it a little bit more strength. You want to make sure you tighten it, and then uh, you want to go ahead and do the same thing on this side you want to go ahead and crimp down the little crimp bead which is a little tricky but you squish it down you turn it and then squish it again in that first notch to create a cylinder and they're so tiny that they keep it keeps slipping out I don't know why I'm having trouble with this today but you squish it down so it's another it forms a nice tight cylinder and then um, you're going to go ahead and using your flush cutters you're going to go ahead and snip off that excess uh, beading wire okay so here we have it now the only thing that we need to do is attach the focal bead to the middle here so we're going to get this large jump ring and um, we're going to go ahead and open it up just like that. Thread it through the focal bead. And then let me open it up a little bit more. Attach it to the strand between these two beads, spacer beads, close it up, and um, there you go. There's your large strand, and we'll, we'll be right back and I'll show you how to string the middle strand. So I'm back and now we're going to go ahead and put together the second strand uh, the middle strand which is a little bit shorter and it's a little bit more complicated because we are going to have to attach these beads using some wire um, and so if you haven't done this before it might be a little bit challenging I'm going to go ahead and show you really quick how to do that uh, you're going to need a piece about I don't know maybe three inches in uh, length and then using your round nose pliers you are going to form a little loop um, right here at the end. So go ahead and uh, form the loop 
It's a little tricky if you've never done it before. You may have to look for some tutorials on how to do um, loops using wire. By the way, this is 20 gauge wire. So here we go. I've formed a little P and then I'm going to go ahead and straighten it out just like that so that I can go ahead and um, put on the beads and it'll be nice and straight. Okay, so the first thing we're going to thread on is the four millimeter aqua bicone bead then this really cute um, skeleton skull bead then another four millimeter aqua bicone bead okay so it looks like this so then what you're going to do is using your chain nose pliers you're going to bend it here at and form like a 45 degree angle and I've got way too much wire, so I'm going to go ahead and cut, cut this off. And you're going to want about, I don't know, maybe half an inch, a little bit. Yeah, about half an inch, I would say. So go ahead and snip your wire right there. Take your round nose pliers, just like you did before. You're going to form another little loop. And just go ahead and turn your wrist so that it forms a nice round shape. And you want to make sure that it the end touches the wire so it closes up that loop just like that and then you can always straighten it out make sure that um, the loop is in line with the other one that you formed earlier and you can just turn it like this so that line they lined up and this is what you have okay so now we're going to go ahead and open up one of these loops just like this you want to open it this way and then take your component thread it on and very carefully Close up that loop again, just like that. Make sure that the ends touch. And so this is what you have. All right, so now we're going to attach this link. And what you're going to need to do is to open up this other end just like that go ahead and thread on that link and then close up that loop just like this I don't know if you can see that You want to make sure that that it's nice and closed so that it doesn't come apart when you're wearing it. And this is what you have. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and um, cut myself a length of beading wire. Not too long, I don't know, maybe 12 inches or so maybe a little bit more, and I've threaded on a crimp bead and a wire protector. And then the next step is to go ahead and thread the end of this link onto the wire protector. And it's kind of tricky because you want to make sure you're holding onto that crimp bead. So you thread it on like this and then you thread the wire through the crimp bead just like we did before. very tiny so you gotta be, be extra careful and this is what you have and then you want to go ahead and crimp it down and I always have trouble with these I don't know if it's that if it's the brand of crimp bead that I'm using I'm not sure why I'm having trouble crimping down these crimp beads but I'm gonna go ahead and try again so there we go there's the first 
step, then you want to turn it sideways and crimp it down. This way to form, whoops, I'm in the wrong space, to form a tight cylinder. Let me see if I can get this one right. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you want to form a tight cylinder, just like that. And we're going to continue with the, the middle strand, the beading of the middle strand. So the next bead is the four millimeter aqua colored bead, bicone bead, then another skull bead, then a four millimeter bicone, then comes the um, four millimeter gold spacer bead, then the diamond shaped embossed bead gold, and then comes another four millimeter spacer bead, and now we're going to use the um, six by four rondelle in the color denim blue and we're going to thread on three of these two three now comes another four millimeter gold spacer bead and then again the denim blue rondelles three of those and then finally the gold spacer bead Okay, so we have this side of the strand, and again, you want to thread the tail through a couple of the beads, not too many, just to give it some more strength. Okay, so this is what we have, and we're going to go ahead and put another crimp bead here at the end, and another wire protector, just like we did before, then we're going to thread the wire through to the other end of the wire protector and the crimp bead, crimp it off, and this is one end of the uh, middle strand, one, one side of it, then we'll do the exact same thing on the other side, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, as you can see, I finished um, stringing the middle strand. Um, I did the exact same thing on this side that I did on that side. I did make one little change though, because after, you know, realizing that it was a little bit too long, I had to um, eliminate some of these uh, rondelle beads at the end, which is the um, the number two, six by four millimeter rondelles in the denim blue color. Initially, I had told you that we needed 12, six on each side. Well, now as it turns out, you're only gonna need one and then a spacer gold bead at the end. Okay, so um, anyway, so these are the two strands, as you can see, and um, I'll be back to uh, put on the shorter, the third strand, which is the shorter one, which will be sitting on top here. All right, so I'm back, and I went ahead and threaded on the shorter strand at the top, and I made some changes because, again, I wanted to make sure that it laid properly, and so I had to make some changes in the design of the um, the beads, the, the layout of the beads. I still have the, vo the focal bead here, and I still have the gold spacer beads, but as you can see, instead of three of each color, I've got two of each color, and then I've also added um, uh, three of the um, six by four rondelle beads in denim blue, right here on either side of the focal bead. So we've got a spacer bead, three of the rondelles in denim blue, uh, a spacer bead, two of the bicone, the aqua colored bicones, a spacer bead, two of the rondelle, um, not, I'm sorry, not rondelle, round steel blue shimmer beads, two of those, another spacer bead, two of the aqua bicones, a spacer bead, two of the round steel blue shimmer beads, a spacer bead, two of the bicones, a spacer bead, two round beads, spacer bead, two bicones, spacer bead, and then the wire protector. And I went ahead and attached these three strands to a large jump ring on this side. And I've also done the same thing on the other side. 
So yeah, that's the, what, what it looks like. So the only thing that's left now is to attach the chain and then the clasp at the top. Same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I will be right back. Okay, so here's the finished product. I went ahead and um, attached the chain. The chain is about four and a half inches long. And then I attached a jump ring on it on either end. And then a, same thing on this side, plus a larger ch jump ring for the clasp. And uh, anyway, so this is what it looks like. And I think it looks pretty nice. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on a necklace stand so you can see what it looks like um, hanging. And I'll be right back. Okay, so here it is. Um, I wanted to show it to you on the uh, the necklace stand so you can get some idea of how it looks uh, when it's put on, how it hangs. I'm very happy with it. I think it looks beautiful. I think the beads are absolutely gorgeous. I love this pendant. Um, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. And um, you know, you just can't go wrong with a bargain bead box subscription because they always send beads that coordinate with each other. So it's very easy to get ideas and find inspiration. Um, you know, um, it's it's much more difficult if you have a selection of beads that don't get, uh, don't go together. But these definitely do. And uh, anyway, I'm very happy with it. And I hope you like this video. Please subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And uh, thanks a lot for watching.